good afternoon everyone. Can everyone hear me okay at the back? Perfect. Um, as, as lovely, uh, the lovely introduction there, uh, my name is Gavin Patterson and I'm from the Health and Social Care Alliance. Uh, now, the, the big long title really means that I'm passionate about self-management, this idea of us keeping ourselves well. And I have been, uh, you know, lucky enough to really see uh, both Karen and Janet and others involved in the Strathclyde Lupus Group in action. Um, and so it is a real privilege to be here, to be invited along, uh, knowing, you know, the hard work that's put into these events and the hard work that is put into the, the Strathclyde Lupus Group. So it's, it's lovely to be here. So for those of you who don't know who we are, the, the Health and Social Care Alliance are a national third sector intermediary, which is really a fancy way of saying we are a charity set up to represent other charities in Scotland. Um, and like most charities, uh, we have a, a vision, and that vision is for us to see a Scotland where people who are disabled, have long-term conditions, or who are unpaid paid carers, have a strong voice and enjoy their right to live well. It's also worth saying that the Health and Social Care Alliance is a membership organisation. Um, and we have just over 1,500 members at the Alliance. The membership consists of people with long-term conditions, carers, health and social care professionals, uh, health boards, anyone really with an interest and a passion in health and social care can join the Alliance. So just a, a brief background, in 2006 we were, we were called the Long Term Conditions Alliance and really it was a group of people who got together who were passionate about health and social care in Scotland and who wanted to see and push forward uh, real change and in 2008 we changed our name to the Health and Social Care Alliance, now really known as the, the Alliance or, or Alliance Scotland to reflect the, the wider work that we were going to be doing uh, at that moment in time. As you can see from this uh, wheel here. On the outside of the wheel, I'm not going to go, go through this, but on the outside of the wheel are uh, all the projects and programmes that are based in the Alliance. Um, it would take, take ages to go through all the, the projects and programmes we have, so I really advise you to, to go onto our website and have a look at some of those uh, projects and programmes, because most of them, the vast majority of these programmes, uh, everyone and, and anyone can get involved with. You see down here something called Gone Your Cell. Uh, now, Go On Your Cell was released in 2008, and that is the self-management strategy for Scotland. Now, the interesting thing about Go On Your Cell is for a Scottish government, or any, any government uh, strategy document, is that it was written with and by people with long-term conditions, people who really have lived experience of what it is like to self-manage with a long-term condition. So this document really set out what self-management and the strategies of self-management around policies and practice and what that was going to look like in Scotland. And it's an incredibly innovative, uh, easy to read document. So it really was people with long-term conditions and their real life experience that shaped how self-management was going to look uh, in Scotland. We have at the Alliance the, the Self-Management Impact Fund, which is two million pounds a year roughly £2 million a year given to uh, projects and organisations who look to support people to self-manage. And I know Lupus, the Strathclyde Lupus Group uh, were funded through the, the fund, I think, in 2010, 2011 and 11. We have the, the self-management campaign, which is con uh, entitled My Condition, My Terms, My Life. And if you go onto the website, you'll see, uh, I know Karen's done, I don't know how many videos Karen's done now, but there is a video of Karen uh, on the, the website there. And, and if you watch the video, it's no surprise that she's been interviewed by, by STV after a performance on that. We have Self-Management Week. Um, and Self-Management Week has been going for a number of years. It is a week dedicated to self-management, to raise awareness of the importance of self-management in Scotland. And that usually takes place around the, the end of September. And finally, we have the Self-Management Network Scotland, uh, which I'll, I'll talk to you a bit about near the end. So we've, we've really found that with, with self-management, we, we kind of looked at self-management and thought, how do we spread self-management? How, how do we get the word out that it is important for people to self-manage? Manage? And really, it came back to us that it's people's real life experience, people's real stories of how they have self-managed their long-term condition that helps us to spread the word of the importance of self-management. So it seems only right that I share my own uh, personal story of self-management. 
Now, my story is not related to, to lupus. However, we believe that the, the principles and values of self-management reflect across all long-term conditions. So my self-management journey uh, really began in uh, back when I was in my late teens. So when I was in my late teens, I was incredibly passionate about health and fitness. You know, going to the gym, playing every kind of sport you can imagine. I was, I, was, I was incredibly enthusiastic about health and fitness. In fact, at that point, I was a health and fitness student. So while studying health and fitness, it came, uh, you know, I was diagnosed with chronic kidney failure, which came completely out of the blue for me at the time. You know, here I was, this kind of young, fit individual, uh, and, and this diagnosis of a long-term condition uh, was a complete and utter shock to me. It really did feel as if my world had, had turned upside down because everything that was important to me or everything that seemed important to me at the time, I felt was going to be taken away from me, you know, as, as having a life now with a long-term condition. And usually, you know, up to that point, being so used to, you know, if, if I have a cut, it'll be bandaged up and I'll be on my way. If I break something, it'll be in a cast, you know, and you can go on your way. If you have a cold, it'll clear up. But suddenly with a long-term condition, you're faced with the thought that this, this is something that's going to be affecting me for the rest of my life and something that I'll need to try and live with for the rest of my life. So shortly after diagnosis, I began to get the symptoms, I began to feel unwell, and I started my kind of journey on uh, dialysis. Now, I was what the, the, the medical world would call a, a non-compliant patient. I was the worst patient you can imagine. I would not take my medication, I would not follow the, the, the correct diet, I would show up late to my appointments. For me, I felt as if I had no, I, I didn't have a good enough reason to, to look after myself and keep myself well. And you kind of think, is, you know, is putting your life in danger not a good enough reason? Well actually for me at the time it wasn't. The rest of my life, the things that were important to me had, had been affected so much that I cared less and less about my health and my, and my well-being. So I was a, a, a completely terrible patient at that time. In fact, even at that point, my poor self-management, me not taking my, my blood pressure medication that I should and everything else, led me close to death on two or three occasions. In fact, one morning I woke up completely blind because my blood pressure went so high, I was blind for a few weeks. And even that didn't, uh, didn't prop me into properly complying with all the, the requests, much to the, the frustration. I mean, the medical professions didn't have much hair left by the time, by the time they, they had dealt with me. But on, during dialysis as well, I had this terrible migraine. So I would, I would go, the, the process was my mum, who was my, my main carer at the time, she would take me to the dialysis unit in the morning, I would be plugged into the machine, and after half an hour I would start to get this really sore head, and the, the pain in my head would continue for the next few hours, and it would get worse and worse, till eventually I was feeling sick. And to kind of combat this, I was given painkillers. So starting off on, on kind of paracetamol, and the painkillers would get stronger and stronger and stronger as time went on, until eventually I was on these really strong painkillers, still not really touching the, the, the pain in the head that I had. But one day, and this is really the beginning of my, my self-management journey, one day I came back, and I went to find my bag, which my, my painkillers were kept in. And my bag had been left in my car, and my sister had taken the car and she was away up north, so I didn't have my painkillers. So at that time I was thinking, oh God, you know, it's bad enough with these painkillers in my head, what's it going to be like now I don't have them? So my mum uh, decided to go to the, the local pharmacy around the corner and see what the, the local pharmacist can do. Now, she had a conversation with the pharmacist which went on for about 10-15 minutes. I was in the house, you know, hoping she would come back as soon as possible. And she came back to the house with these over-the-counter pain painkillers. I'd seen the advert on TV and everything else, but I thought, what, what on earth are these going to do? These are over-the-counter pain medications. You know, I'm on the, I'm on the highest dose of, of the, the most potent painkiller medications you can imagine. But anyway, I took these over-the-counter painkillers, and for the first time in six months, my sore head went away. So suddenly, suddenly I felt this absolute relief. It was like a euphoria. I don't know if you've ever had like a terrible toothache where you've had your tooth pulled out or something like that, it was that multiplied by 10, I thought this is brilliant. So there on in, I started using this painkiller, but it, the, the, the painkiller is not important. What happened was, it was, a, it was a, the conversation that the pharmacist had had with my mum, who was my carer at the time, this conversation with the pharmacist 
asking all kinds of questions about what was the pain like, where is the pain coming from, what does your son enjoy doing, when does the pain happen, what does he eat, all kinds of questions. This conversation that took place led the pharmacist to believe that it was a tension headache that, that I was getting. So actually these simple tension headache painkillers took away the pain and from then on in, you know, my time of dialysis was, was fairly straightforward and, and fairly easy. Um, now after this, after suddenly being able to control my sore heads, feeling as if I had some kind of uh, power back in my life, you know, I'm diagnosed with a long-term condition, you have this sense of disempowerment where the power is taken away from you because suddenly your life is not the same as what it used to be and you, you really you really can feel powerless and for a lot of people that comes with just this, having the symptoms of a long-term condition and then they can be diagnosed and the diagnosis kind of gives you the power back and for me it was starting to get control of these terrible headaches that I had so this started me off on my self-management journey and so I started uh, reading, I started reading about chronic kidney failure, I started reading the leaflets, I started taking my medication, I started then looking at my diet. And from then on in, my self-management journey really took off and I really did start to take more care of myself, I suppose, after I realised I had this part of my, my life back again. So in, 2000, in uh, 2009, I had a kidney transplant and my sister, my sister was... Uh, you know, kind enough to give me one of her kidneys, which I'm told she doesn't need. Um, so I had a kidney transplant in, in 2009, and eventually I was back at the gym, back doing everything uh, that I love doing. But I still self-manage to this day, because I have a long-term condition, that doesn't go away. You know, I have to take my medication, I have to sometimes watch my diet, I have to, uh, you know, make sure I stay out of the, the sun and wear sun cream, all these different things. But I am now, I'm now more aware of my self-management and I'm now more aware of the power that me self-managing can give back to myself and, and that, that kind of sense of empowerment that I managed to get back through self-managing my, my long-term condition. So like I said, self-management is really you know, like a journey. and the, the first stage of that journey can quite often just be taking medication. And quite a lot of the times, people are actually self-managing when they don't realise if you're taking your medication if you are going to your appointments, if you are speaking to other people, if you are coming to these events and learning more about your condition, then that is self-management. And everyone is at a different stage on their, their self-management journey. So I started by you know, taking my medication, I then started reading more information, I started looking at my diet, I started then re uh, getting peer support, speaking to other people about the condition, I started to exercise again, and now I'm in a position where I can tell other people about self-management and share my story to hopefully inspire other people uh, to self-manage as well. So self-management for me really felt, really meant that I was suddenly empowered, I was in control, I was now in control of this thing that I had lost control of. I had of course improved well-being, improved confidence and self-esteem once I felt that I started to get my life back. I had of course improved health and I felt better supported. Sometimes as well, the information that I've learned about my condition, I quite often go to my uh, regular appointments and I can have great conversations with, with the, the health professional because I feel as if I've went and did a master's course in chronic kidney failure and I bet a lot of you feel the same about, about lupus as well. So there's a great quote from Gone Yourself, uh, which is, life is for living and for living well not enduring and that's something I firmly believe in that a lot of, a lot of people with a long term condition can end up just living or, or enduring enduring having the condition and enduring the life and really self management is about getting your life back and about living your life so within uh, within going yourself there are five principles of self management now remember these principles are, are created and thought up by people with lived experience people with long term conditions so these five principles really tell you what self-management is and define what self-management and supported self-management should be. So be accountable to me and value my experience. It's really both, ex both sets of expertise together. So it's the, the, you imagine the health professional who is an expert in that condition and a, an expert in the medical field. But you as the patient, you're an expert in your own life. You know, you don't, you, you're not with the, the medical professions or you're not in the hospital. You, you're in there for a tiny, tiny portion of your life. The rest of your life 
you are living on your own terms. And so it's those two, these two sets of expertise that really form successful self-management. And notice that it says value, to value your experience. It doesn't say just take in, in, in your experience into account. It means to really value the experience that you bring to the table as someone with a long-term condition. I am a whole person, and this is for my whole life. You know, like I said before, when you have a long-term condition, there is no quick fix. It's something that is with you for the rest of your life, and that can be really difficult to, to come to terms with. Um, also, the fact that you're not just a patient, as I mentioned before, there's a whole lot more going on in your life that you can bring uh, to the table. And that whole life includes your family, uh, your friends, your pet, if you have one, the favourite walk that you like to go on on a Saturday. It includes everything else in your life. I'm the leading partner in the management of my health. This is about really being part of a wider team. Uh, and I like to think of this as when I was younger, my dad used to take me uh, to football games. And I used to go along to these football games, much to you know the headache of my dad, with a backpack, with my football boots, my shin guards, and full football kit in the bag. And I had this dream of the manager one day turning around and saying, all the players are injured, can we get anybody from the fans to play? And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'll go play. It didn't happen, sadly. But really, uh, traditional healthcare, if you, look at, if you look at the way patients have been traditionally or historically treated, patients have been the fans. So patients have been in the stands watching as everyone else, everyone else does the work uh, for them. So, so, so imagine yourself as a patient and you're watching uh, for example, the nurse, the dietitian, the GP, the consultant, they're all out there. You've got something terrific to I don't know how much I had to offer in terms of football, but as a patient well, stand, sitting there watching, you have something really terrific to offer in terms of your knowledge, in terms of your experience. So self-management really is about you no longer being in the stands as a patient. It's, it's about you being out there and really being the captain of that team, being part of a team in your, your own self-management. Clean information helps me make decisions that are right for me. It's important to get information from all sources. Um, you know, you can get information from all types of places now, including the internet, social media, leaflets. And it's important to look at information that is right for you. But also, I remember when I was first diagnosed, and I, I must have read about 10 different leaflets. I know I watched two different DVDs on kidney failure, and I don't think I took any of it in whatsoever. So it's also important to be ready and, and, and read that information, and take that information in at the right time when you're ready for it. Self-management is not a replacement for services. It doesn't mean going it alone. This can often be a misconception. About the very term self-management, it can often sound like it's something that you do yourself, but it really isn't. It's, been, it's about being part of that, that wider team. So, Self-management week I touched on a bit earlier, and last year at last year's self-management week, we asked people uh, who or what inspires you to self-manage. And so some of the answers we get back were, were fairly straightforward. So we had doctors, support group, medication, diet, uh, and information. These are the formal things that help people to self-manage and help people to keep well. These are the things that you would really expect people to say in terms of keeping themselves well. But people also told us about exercise, flexible working hours, family, volunteering, having a dog or a cat, uh, having a routine, time to yourself, learning something new, speaking to other people, reading, and uh, football or, or hobbies. It's really, self-management is about these two, these two things coming together. So without the things in the purple, people have no motivation or less motivation to do the things in green, to do those formal sources of, of self-management support. So it's about looking at that holistically and seeing that self-management is really about all those things, not just taking a medication, not just following your diet, but thinking about having a pet, thinking about the walks that you go or the relationships you have with your friends. And lastly, a word that came up again and again and again that actually really quite surprised us when we asked people what inspired them was love. And People, people felt that the love that they had for their family or their friends was the one thing that really helped them self-manage and look after themselves. But more importantly, people were telling us that it's about the love that they had for themselves as a person. And I think looking at self-management now for me, it really is about valuing and loving, loving myself and loving myself as a person enough 
to be able to do what I possibly can to look after myself and, and self-manage my, my long-term condition. So what now, I'd like you to um, just briefly reflect, even, even during the, the break or, or at some point today, about the first two questions there, after everything you know, you've heard today. So what could you be doing to self-manage? Where are you on your journey of self-management? And what could you be doing to self-manage? And also, how can you inspire others to self-manage? You know, I see the work of uh, Karen and everyone else and Janet, um, and they're really inspired to, to help other people through their own experience. So I'm here in this role talking to you today because of my experience uh, of, long, of, of having a long-term condition. And I know that the, the vast majority of you in this room are passionate about helping other people and making sure other people don't necessarily have to go through the things that you have went through as a patient. And so one of the things to reflect on is how can you inspire other people as a patient, as someone with experience, to self-manage. And finally, I would invite you to, to join the self-management network. I think you've all got a leaflet there uh, about the, the self-management network Scotland, but really the network is about bringing together people, everyone with a long-term condition or everyone who's passionate or enthusiastic uh, about self-management. To really, joy, to really share and learn uh, the, the process and the experiences of self-management. I must uh, ask as well, I, I must add as well, that to join the network is completely free of charge. Any event that you attend is completely free of charge. There are no hidden catches, there's no small print. Um, it's, everything's, everything's completely free. If you are, if you are on Twitter, uh, you can find us, those are the Twitter details down there. And I know we have a question and answer session after this, but if you, do have, if you do have any questions, anything comes up after the event that you can think of around self-management, please feel free to get in touch. That's what, that's what we're there for. And I'd be more than happy to, to answer your questions. But thank you very much for listening. <laughs>